Hello, I'm John Middlebrook, the general manager of Chevrolet. And on behalf of all of us at Chevrolet, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for buying a new Corvette. Whether this is your first Corvette or you're a longtime enthusiast, I want you to know that we truly value your business and we are committed to your total satisfaction as a Corvette owner. Of all the great cars and trucks that Chevrolet sells, this one is truly unique. Like many of you, I grew up with a special fondness for Corvette. It's been part of American culture for nearly half a century now, and during that time, it has stood as a symbol of extreme pride. I hope you feel that pride every time that you get behind the wheel of your new Corvette. Every time that you drive it along a winding road and every time that you wash it in your driveway. It's truly an extraordinary car. So congratulations and thank you again for choosing Corvette. The programs on this video explore the many facets of Corvette ownership. In the segment titled Your New Corvette, you'll see the 1999 Corvette lineup and hear from members of the engineering team about the design, technology, and features of your new Corvette. We'll also pass along a few key ownership tips that you should be aware of as a new Corvette owner. In the driver's seat provides a thorough cockpit overview of the controls that are within your reach when you're sitting behind the wheel. The segment called Driving the DIC familiarizes you with the operation of your Corvette's Advanced Driver Information Center. It's valuable information that can help you customize key features to your driving needs. In Maintaining and Caring for Your Corvette, we'll review vehicle maintenance and care information that will help you keep your new Corvette running well and looking good. Throughout the videotape, John Heinrichsee, one of General Motors' top performance car engineers, who also races Corvettes professionally, offers driving tips that will help you enjoy your Corvette to its fullest. When you need to go back and find specific information again, the enclosed program guide provides content summaries and time codes for each segment. Now enjoy the program, and most of all, enjoy your new Corvette. There is nothing quite like Corvette. Whether you've chosen the coupe, convertible, or the hardtop, you've chosen more than just a car. You've chosen an American legend. We're here at this test track to show you what makes Corvette a world-class sports car. The exciting news for 1999 is the introduction of the hardtop, the newest model to join the Corvette family. It's the first fixed roof Corvette since 1967, and it's built for performance purists. The slimmed down feature list helps make it lighter and simpler than the other models. And with its standard specially tuned suspension and six speed manual transmission, the hardtop delivers serious performance handling. When you think about Corvette, the first thing that probably comes to mind is power. Corvette showpiece is the LS1 V8 engine. It produces 345 horsepower and 350 foot-pounds of torque. The LS1 features an all-aluminum block, which brings two important benefits to Corvette performance. One of the significant features of this engine is the all-aluminum block. It's basically a lighter weight and more structurally sound component that we've ever produced. The engine incorporates a four-bolt head design that improves and aids us in head gasket durability as well as reduced friction for improved fuel economy. Secondly, the engine has a deep skirt block, which dramatically improves the noise, vibration, and harshness characteristics of the vehicle. 
To give you an idea of the LS-1's powerful capabilities, Corvette paced the 1998 Indy 500 with no performance or powertrain modifications of any kind. But chances are good that you're not going to be pacing Indy in your Corvette. And that's why the LS-1 is designed to be just as responsive in everyday driving situations. Corvette's standard electronic throttle control gives you precise control over the LS-1's impressive power band, whether at low speeds around town or on a long stretch of scenic highway. Electronic throttle control gives the customer more precise control of launch as well as city and highway driving. With electronic throttle control, there is no mechanical connection between the throttle pedal and the engine. It gives you tackle feedback as well as precise control. An interesting fact about Corvette's powertrain is that beyond just generating power, it actually contributes to the structure and balance of your vehicle. Whether your Corvette is equipped with a four-speed automatic or six-speed manual, the transmission is located away from the engine, back here, just ahead of the rear axle. A prop shaft runs through a structural center tunnel to connect the transmission to the engine. The tunnel literally serves as the backbone of the car. It's an important component to the world-class structure that sets Corvette apart from other sports cars. In addition, the transmission placement helps balance Corvette. At 51.49, Corvette's front-to-rear weight distribution helps give it excellent balance over the range of driving situations. Finally, the rear-mounted transmission design allows plenty of space for driver and passenger footroom, which you'll appreciate every time you take a long trip in your Corvette. We talk a lot about structure in this overview of your new Corvette. That's because Corvette's great structure translates into a variety of benefits to you as a driver. It gives you a smooth, comfortable, quiet ride, responsive, controlled handling, and precise steering control, whether you're in a performance driving situation or just running around town. Good structure is especially important with open roof vehicles like the convertible. That's why Corvette was engineered to have one of the stiffest body structures in the world for an open cockpit sports car. Corvette structure starts with a full length perimeter frame that acts as the foundation for the rest of the car. You can see the structural transmission tunnel running through the center. The side rails provide rigidity, but are still lightweight despite their size. That's because they are hydroformed, molded from the inside by ultra high pressure water injection. Innovative manufacturing techniques and materials are found throughout the car. This is a cutaway section of the floor pan in your Corvette. It's made of balsa wood, covered by composite material. Balsa wood is very light. When you sandwich it between high strength composite material like this, you get a strong, lightweight structural component that also helps absorb noise and vibration. The same commitment to advanced engineering technology that went into Corvette's body structure is also very evident in its exterior design and styling. With a .29 coefficient of drag, the Corvette Coupe is the sleekest of any mass-produced sports car. And at .33 CD, this is one of the most aerodynamic convertibles on the market. One of the great aspects of Corvette is its dual personality. Take the suspension system. Corvette is known as one of the best handling performance cars in the world, but at the same time, it's easy and comfortable to drive every day. Corvette features a four-wheel independent suspension system with a short and long arm, or SLA, design. SLA is also known as a double wishbone for the V-like shape of the upper and lower control arms. This kind of setup helps minimize the amount of unsprung weight at each wheel, which helps the tires maintain optimal contact with the road. For even more driving adaptability, your Corvette may be equipped with a real-time damping adjustable suspension system. RTD is a sophisticated system that utilizes sensors at each corner of the vehicle to determine driving conditions. A state-of-the-art control module reads those signals every millisecond and adjusts the damping of the shock absorbers when necessary. It firms up the ride during performance maneuvers and softens it during normal operation. As a driver, you can adjust the sensitivity of the system by using the control switch to choose touring, sport, or performance. Helping you maintain the ultimate control as a driver is the available active handling system. 
In simple terms, active handling helps correct the difference between the driver's intended direction for the car during a turn and the actual direction. Its benefits are most noticeable during slippery road conditions or performance handling situations. It's truly the next step in the evolution of Corvette's ABS and traction control. Now to measure the driver's intended cornering direction, the system incorporates a steering wheel angle sensor, individual wheel sensors, an accelerator pedal sensor, a brake switch, and a master cylinder pressure sensor. It uses this information to determine the driver's desired yaw rate and speed. Yaw rate is simply the speed at which the car turns or rotates as it corners. The system also measures the car's actual yaw rate and lateral acceleration using two new and specific transducers, an accelerometer and a yaw rate sensor. The active handling system activates when there's a significant enough difference between how the driver intends for the car to corner and how it is actually cornering. It automatically applies any of the vehicle's four brakes to assist in correcting the situation. Now here's an animation developed by our engineering team to help show the performance of active handling. It simulates an aggressive lane change maneuver on a wet surface. The white car is equipped with active handling and the blue car is not. As the car enters the maneuver, the driver applies more steering input than the car can react to. The car starts to push or understeer. The active handling system senses this and applies the inside rear brake, helping to pull the car into the corner. Once the car is in the left lane, the driver tries to straighten it out, but the yaw inertia of the car causes it to turn more than the driver wanted. Active handling reacts to this oversteer condition by applying the outside front wheel brake. The resulting torque helps keep the rear end of the car from getting too loose. As the driver returns to the right lane, a similar sequence of events unfolds, worsened by the whipping action of the maneuver. The active handling system assists the driver in maintaining control by applying the brakes appropriately. This affords the driver a greater level of control as well as gradually slowing the car to a more manageable speed. The overall effectiveness of the Corvette active handling system or any similar system is directly related to the available tire traction and the aggressiveness of the given maneuver. Active handling is designed to better utilize available traction to assist the driver, but it cannot overcome the laws of physics. The active handling system reacts only in extreme situations, so special care should be taken when the system does activate because that's a clear signal that the vehicle or tire limits are being exceeded. Now in most situations, the system will help the driver maintain control without being intrusive. Corvette's active handling is also the first system of this type to offer a dual mode operation. You can select the competitive driving mode for autocross or gym kind of competition. The competitive mode maintains the individual wheel braking of active handling, but it disables traction control. Our testing indicates that the lap times of typical Corvette drivers will likely improve with this new system, especially if the driver is just learning the course. Just like the suspension system, Corvette's Magna Steer Variable Effort Steering System is designed to perform well through a variety of driving situations. It provides easier turning effort at low speeds, like in parking lots, and firmer steering feel at highway speeds. Handling is further enhanced by the Corvette's staggered tire sizes. 17-inch front tires provide superior handling capabilities, while 18-inch tires in the rear enhance traction and all Corvettes are equipped with Goodyear Extended Mobility Tires, or EMTs, as standard equipment. The Goodyear Extended Mobility Tire is made possible by rubber, stiff rubber inserts that are molded into the sidewall of the tire. When the tire loses air, the rubber inserts pick up the load and continue to support the weight of the car. The benefit of these tires is that when you have a flat tire, you don't have to stop and fix it. You don't have to endure unsafe conditions or the inconvenience of having to change a tire. Although we recommend that you would have the tire inflated or repaired at your earliest convenience, you could drive up to 200 miles at 55 miles per hour without air. When driving on a flat tire, you may hear a rustling sound that's associated with the flexing of the rubber. That's completely normal. Corvette's interior also serves a dual role. 
emphasizing driver control while providing exceptional comfort. You'll notice when you sit in Corvette that the seats are comfortable and supportive. The bucket seats have lateral support, back angle adjustments, and a six-way power driver seat adjuster. Now, there are times when you may notice a little play in the seat back. That's perfectly normal. The seat is designed that way to prevent damage that may be caused by moving the seat rearward when it's fully reclined. The best way to recline your seat is to first move it to your preferred distance from the foot pedals. Then lean forward, taking most of your weight off the seat back. Lift the lever to recline the seat, release the lever, and then sit back. Once you're in the proper driving position, Corvette's new head-up display feature helps you keep track of critical display functions without taking your eyes off the road. The head-up display system takes the display information, puts it through an optical system, and projects it up onto your windshield. It's taken from aircraft technology that's been around for a number of years. The Corvette head-up display was designed to be able to accommodate mostly the performance driver. It allows the driver now to be able to see their tack, gauges, and other information that other head-up displays don't provide. There are four key components to your head-up display. The head-up display itself, the windshield, which contains a scientifically adjusted anti-lacerative layer, which provides a nice crisp image to the driver. The instrument cluster, which provides the data to the HUD to keep it accurate. And the switches, which are located here on the left side of the instrument cluster. The top switch, or the page switch, allows the driver to be able to add and subtract format to their preference. The dimmer switch allows the driver to be able to adjust their image to a brightness level which they're comfortable. And the display switch allows the driver to be able to adjust the image and center it within their seated height. Some of the key things to remember when using your head-up display are to be able to keep your brightness down to the lowest level possible where you're still comfortable driving and you can still see the image. One of the other things is to try to keep your content down. For instance, if you're driving in the city, you may not want to have all your information up. You may want to limit it to just your speed. If you are driving under a high-pressure situation during a race, for instance, you may want to have your tack and your gauge information showing. There's really no special care required for your head-up display. If you do need to clean the lens, just use a piece of cloth and some household glass cleaner and go ahead and wipe the lens. Uh, be very careful, though, not to press too hard. The head-up display is just one more example of how Corvette continues to evolve as an exciting and fun-to-drive car. But it doesn't always take a performance enhancement or new technical feature to make driving more enjoyable. Sometimes, all you need is the wind in your face. If you own a coupe or convertible, oh, that's a snap. Some of the most fun you'll have driving a new Corvette will be open-air driving. To make that even more enjoyable and easier to do, the new target top we've designed is, is the best yet. You'll want to start with releasing the rear hatch with the button on the IP. Come around back and make sure your two floor retainers are secured. It's easily done by hooking them into the floor, rotating it counterclockwise to a detent. While you're back here, also make sure that both rear retainers are in the full rear position. Now you're ready to pull the top out. Come back up front, release the two front latches and the rear center latch. With your right hand, raise the front edge slightly, slipping your fingers under the front. Rotate it forward and grab the rear edge as close to center as you can and raise it up. This new top is very light with a magnesium frame. Bring it around to the back of the car, sliding the two rear pins into those floor retainers. You then engage the rear retainers into slots in the roof to secure it while driving. You're ready to go. As with everything on the new Corvette, we've tried to make it easier for the owner to use. Let me show you how the convertible top comes down. Once you've released the two levers on the windshield header similar to the Targa, stick your fingers underneath the front edge, slowly raising that. It'll loosen the rear edge and when both are perpendicular, put your hand underneath, push the button and electronically release the hard boot. Put the leading edge down into the compartment, lowering the rest of the top with it. Once you've shut the lid, you've completed the task and you're ready to roll. One of the features we're really proud of in the new convertible is the fact that you have a large trunk in the back of the car. With the convertible top stored, you still have enough room for two full sets of golf clubs. It makes the car much easier to use for an everyday driver. A couple of features we've also built in to safeguard both you and the vehicle is 
Should you have forgotten to lower your windows, when you release the hard boot, the car will do it for you. This will help in uh, keeping you from inadvertently pinching your fingers when raising the top between the top of glass and the roof. Another nice feature, should the deck lid have been left open for any reason, your hard boot will not operate, it will not raise. This will keep you from inadvertently contacting your fingers or the, the two body panels together, protect you and the car. To raise the top, you simply reverse the process you used in lowering it. Reach underneath the hard boot, hitting the button to release that. Raise the front edge of the top up. Reach in and grab the rear edge. And when both are straight up, re-secure the hard boot. Lower the rear edge, the front edge, and reattach both front latches. The beauty of the new top is the linkage inside now secures the rear edge without having any auxiliary latches in the rear of the car. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of your new Corvette. In the upcoming segments of this tape, you'll learn a lot more about key features and operations. Whether you drive in competitive events or just around town, you'll see that Corvette is designed to give you the best possible driving experience. Enjoy the rest of the program, and thanks for watching. Corvette doesn't require any special break-in period above and beyond what you would do for any new car. Basically what that means is for the first 500 miles you want to take it easy. That means limiting wide open throttle, accelerations. Uh, when launching the car from rest you want to take it easy in either a manual or an automatic. And you want to try to keep the car seeing a variety of speeds during the course of that 500 miles. Try not to have the engine running at one RPM or one steady state speed for an extended period during that time. The reason for that is it's that the mechanical parts are seating together. They're meshing together for the first time and they're wearing together to create a smooth running machine. If you put a lot of energy into the car, either through heavy braking or high intensity accelerations, you could create some wear patterns that would result in either noise or the car may not be as smooth as it could have been. For brakes, this especially important part is the first 200 miles. You want to make sure that you leave enough room in traffic that you never have to get into a, a panic stop situation, that for those first 200 miles you can brake moderately at all times. It is true that the Corvette air dam is quite low to the ground. Uh, the reason it's there is aerodynamics. All the Corvette models need to have extremely good aerodynamics. Now sports cars are not naturally aerodynamic. They tend to be wide and low, they tend to have big tires, they have uh, large engines that need a lot of air for cooling. So aerodynamic achievement is very difficult on a sports car, yet it is absolutely essential for the Corvette so that we can have the astonishing acceleration performance and powertrain performance coupled with surprisingly good fuel economy and no gas guzzler tax. One of the ways we achieved that aerodynamic performance was to bring this air dam or valence down close to the ground. It sits about four or five inches above the ground and so it can make contact on large road obstacles such as large speed bumps or steep driveway ramps. It's designed to accommodate those kinds of obstacles. It consists of three pieces, two outboard sections that are made of a tough, flexible plastic, and a center section that also flexes quite a long way and can spring back into position. In spite of the robust design of the air dam, the best advice I can give is to follow the instructions in the owner's manual. Namely, use caution when approaching obstacles in the road. Large speed bumps, curbs, steep driveway ramps should all be approached with caution. The best idea is to get the car slowed down before you get to the obstacle. The reason is you don't want to be braking as you make contact with the obstacle because the braking actually pushes the nose of the car down and makes the air dam even lower than it already is. So following those directions, you may hear some noise in the car when the air dam makes contact with those obstacles, but it will flex out of the way and will continue to perform its important aerodynamic and engine cooling functions. Some customers have asked about a mechanical buzz or rattle noise coming from underneath the car. It sounds like this.
This noise is not an indication of a problem. It's a characteristic noise inherent in the driveline configuration of the Corvette. With a high output V8 engine in the front and a high capacity rear mounted transmission, that noise is simply inherent characteristic of that uh, driveline design. The Corvette's driveline has been designed to be as powerful, lightweight, and simple as possible, and therefore as reliable as we can possibly make it. When I get into a Corvette to take a drive, what I like to do first is get myself in the right position for operation of the pedals and the steering wheel. It's most important that when you're pushing on the brake pedal that you have your knee bent. In order to get in the position so that you have a bent knee when you're braking, I like to reach to the floor pan and if I can get my toes to the floor pan comfortably, then I'm close enough to the brake pedal. In this case, I'm too far away, so I move myself up to where my toes are comfortably on the floor pan. That way, when I'm pushing on the brake pedal, I'll have a bent leg and I can get good leverage on the brake pedal in case I need it for an emergency stop. The second most important thing is to have good control of the steering wheel. I like to be in a position where I can comfortably lay my hand over the steering wheel so that when I'm steering, I've got good leverage on the steering wheel. In this case, I'm too far away, so I'll bring the back up just a bit so that I can get nice, comfortable reach on the steering wheel. Most of maintaining the proper seating position is designed into the seat and the controls, but the seat belt is also part of the overall seating position in the Corvette. The seat belt buckle moves with the seat so that it's always in the right position to buckle up the seat belt and give you the most control. Then if you're driving the Corvette in a more sporting manner to get additional control, you can use what we call the cinch feature. Pull the seat belt out all the way and allow it to ratchet back in and that locks it in position to really hold you well in the seat. Sitting in the driver's seat of your new Corvette can be an exhilarating experience. With a powerful LS1 V8 engine and long hood line in front and the high-tech cockpit style interior surrounding you. There's an entire array of instruments, gauges and switches that fall within your reach. While it's definitely exciting, it can also seem a little overwhelming at first glance. That's why in this segment, we'll show you how to operate all of these controls to help you feel more comfortable when you're driving Corvette. But before you can get into the vehicle, you'll need your Remote Function Actuator, or RFA. So let's start there. You can use the RFA either as a passive or active entry system. In the passive mode, the fob will automatically unlock the doors as you come into range of the vehicle. You don't have to press any buttons. However, you still need to use the button to open the hatch. Because of the extended range of the passive mode, you may want to turn the system off if you have an attached garage to prevent inadvertent locking and unlocking of the vehicle. You can turn the passive mode off by sliding this lever. Your key fob is now in the active mode. It will function like a regular keyless entry system where you must press this button to unlock the doors and this button to lock them. Once you're inside your new Corvette, you'll see that the cockpit is ergonomically designed for easy use. The layout allows you to check gauges at a glance, and the controls are within close reach. On the driver's door panel, you'll see the power window and door lock controls and outside rearview mirror adjusters. The express down window feature is activated with a quick tap of the auto button. If your Corvette is equipped with the memory option, the controls are located on the driver's door as well. The memory feature will store and recall settings for the driver's seat, the telescopic steering column, outside rear view mirrors, most dual zone climate control features, and the audio system, so different drivers can quickly adjust the settings to where they want them. The very first time you program the memory feature, you'll need to quickly tap the correct button to identify yourself. Following that step and for all future reprogramming, simply adjust the driver's seat, outside mirrors, telescopic steering column, and dual zone climate controls to where you'd like, and press and hold your memory button. Some features of the automatic climate control cannot be stored in memory, including the rear defogger and air inlet. Refer to your owner's manual for more information. Program your audio presets after you've completed the first three steps. Any future audio changes that you make while driving will be stored automatically. 
You can use Memory 1, Memory 2, or both 1 and 2 together to program settings for up to three different drivers. The light above the selected button will glow steady for one second and then flash once the settings are programmed. To recall your settings after someone else has driven the vehicle, either unlock the doors with your key fob in the active mode or simply press your memory button. The light above the button will flash until the correct settings are achieved. It will remain lit for a few seconds once the necessary adjustments are complete. It's important to note that if you drive away before your memory settings are completely recalled, the full adjustments may not occur due to a safety feature that prevents changes while the vehicle is in motion. The turn indicator, cruise control, and headlamp controls are on this stock within easy reach of your left hand. You will hear this chime if you left the turn indicator on for more than three quarters of a mile. This lever allows you to adjust the position of the steering column. Pull the lever toward you, adjust the steering wheel up or down, and then release the lever to lock it in place. If your Corvette is equipped with the available telescoping steering column, use the control knob to move the wheel towards or away from you. Remember to set your seating position before setting the column. The remote hatch release button is located below and to the left of the steering column. If your Corvette is equipped with the optional driving lamps, the button is also located in this area. The control buttons for the available head-up display feature are located here, to the upper left of the steering wheel. To adjust the display, hold down the page button for a moment to scroll through the various combinations of speed, gauges, and tachometer. This switch allows you to adjust the height of the projection. The dimmer switch adjusts the brightness. However, the system does have a light-sensitive automatic adjuster to help minimize the use of the dimmer for hands-free operation. Also, polarized sunglasses may interfere with your ability to see the head-up display. The instrument panel gauges, including engine coolant temperature, oil pressure, tachometer, speedometer, voltmeter, and fuel, are easy to read at a glance. The Driver Information Center, or DIC display, is located at the base of the instrument cluster. The DIC control buttons are to the right. We'll cover using and programming the DIC in another segment. Some of the controls that you'll probably operate most often are the ones on your sound system. It includes several features that make it easy for you to enjoy. To set the clock, first press and hold the hour button and then the minute button until the correct time appears. Your Corvette audio system is equipped with Speed Compensated Volume, or SCV, which will automatically adjust the volume to compensate for increasing road and wind noise as you drive. Simply set the volume knob where you want it, then adjust the outer ring. Each notch on the control ring allows for more volume compensation. If you don't want SCV, move the ring all the way down. You can use Tune or Seek to adjust the radio stations. If you hold the Seek button in for two seconds, you'll see the word Scan appear on the audio display. The radio will then scan through all of the available stations, stopping at each one for a few seconds. Press Seek again to stop scanning. The numbered push buttons allow you to set your favorite stations. Simply tune in a station and, if you prefer, select an auto tone setting to best suit the programming like this. Then press and hold one of the numbers until you hear the sound mute. The station is then programmed. Your stereo will accommodate 6 AM and 12 FM presets between FM 1 and 2. Use the P-Scan button to scan your preselected stations. See your owner's manual for detailed information on the features and operation of your Corvette's standard cassette player or optional CD player. If your Corvette is equipped with the optional 12-disc CD changer, you activate the changer by pressing the tape or CD auxiliary button. If a cassette or CD is in the main player, press the button twice. If there is not a cassette or CD in the main player, pressing the auxiliary button once activates the multi-CD changer. To load CDs, first remove the magazine from the changer. Press the button on the back and insert each disc label side down. Load from the bottom up. When placing the magazine back into the changer, be sure to shut the door completely. 
For more information on the 12 disc CD changer, check the owner's manual. Your new Corvette features retained accessory power. With this system, your stereo and power windows will continue to work for up to 15 minutes after the ignition is turned off and the doors remain closed. If a door is opened, the power will be turned off. The climate controls are located below the audio system. Refer to your owner's manual for a complete description of the features and operation of both the standard system and the optional electronic dual zone climate controls. Near the shift lever, you'll see the traction control switch, which allows you to turn traction control off. You might choose to do so if you're bogged down in deep snow. That would allow the rear wheels to spin, getting through the snow and to the ground in order to gain traction. If your Corvette is equipped with active handling, the control switch is located on the console near the shifter. It is the same switch used for traction control on vehicles not equipped with active handling. Each time you start the car, active handling is automatically engaged. If you wish to turn off active handling and traction control, press the button momentarily. The mode change will be displayed on the driver information center. Press the button momentarily again to turn the systems back on. To enter the active handling competitive driving mode, bring the car to a complete stop. With the car stationary, press and hold the active handling control button for more than five seconds. The DIC will confirm the mode change to competitive. To exit the competitive mode, press the active handling button momentarily. The ride control selector for Corvette's available real-time damping adjustable suspension is also located on the center console. There's also a cup holder, ashtray, cigarette lighter, and a lockable storage compartment for tapes, CDs, sunglasses, or other personal items. Inside the storage compartment, you'll find the fuel filler door release and an auxiliary power outlet for cellular phones or other electronic accessories. There is also an indentation in the front of the console for the power wire, in case you need to close the cover. By now, you're probably feeling more comfortable with the layout of the cockpit. As you can tell, the interior is designed to be easy to use. That's so you can focus on taking your Corvette driving experience to the next level. When we designed the cockpit controls in the Corvette, we designed them so that the things that you needed the most that were most important for maintaining safety as well as security and control of the Corvette were right at your fingertips. Wiper controls can be operated without taking your hands off the steering wheel. The turn signals can be operated without taking your hands from the steering wheel. Flash to pass or bright and dimming the headlights can be done all with your hands right on the steering wheel. It's extremely important that the outside rearview mirrors be adjusted properly, in particular to pick up the blind spots, especially for when entering a freeway or changing lanes on a freeway. When you adjust the mirrors, if you adjust them in so that you can just barely see the side of the car and then adjust them a little bit further outboard so that you can't see the side of the car, that should be a very good starting point to be able to see cars that are in your blind spot. The instrumentation and the driver information center are all set up so that just a quick glance from the road can give you all the information you need for the Corvette. One of the most important aspects of maintaining the Corvette's performance is the tire pressures. On the C5, we've designed the tire pressure system so that you can read each individual tire pressure on the DIC just by pressing the gauges button. The proper cold pressure is 30 psi, and when fully warmed up, 33 to 34 psi is the best pressure for maintaining the performance of the Corvette. Over the years, Corvette has earned international acclaim for offering modern and innovative technology. Now some people may assume that its high-tech components are all strictly performance related. But one of Corvette's most cutting edge features isn't under the hood, part of the suspension package, or in the body structure. In fact, it's in your instrument panel. The Driver Information Center, or DIC, is one of the most important features of your new Corvette. It displays information about how your vehicle is functioning and alerts you if there's a system problem. It also allows you to program features that make it easier for you to use and enjoy your Corvette every day. In this segment, 
we'll cover some of the DIC programming steps that you'll use the most, starting with the fuel button. It displays average overall fuel economy. Press it again to see instantaneous fuel economy calculated for your specific driving conditions. And again for range, which is the remaining distance you can drive without refueling. If the range is less than 30 miles, the display will read, Range Low. The Gauges button steps through a variety of information each time you press it. Oil pressure, oil temperature, coolant temperature, transmission fluid temperature, battery voltage, tire pressure for the front, and the rear tires. The Trip button also scrolls through several functions. It offers two trip odometers and a stopwatch function. It will also calculate your average speed. See your owner's manual for more details. The trip button will also display an estimate of the engine oil's remaining usefulness. When the remaining oil life is low, the system will alert you with a change oil soon message. When the oil life is down to zero, you will receive this message, change oil now. When you see this, it's important that you change your oil as soon as possible. Following the oil change, you will need to reset the oil life reminder. Here's how. Press the trip button so that the oil life percentage is displayed. Press reset and hold it for two seconds. The word reset will appear, then oil life 99%. You must reset the oil life monitor yourself after each oil change. It will not reset itself. The DIC Options button allows you to set functions like the alarm, door locks, and seat settings that you prefer. The available Twilight Sentinel feature allows you to program the headlamps to remain on after you've turned off the vehicle. This will only occur when the headlamps have been turned on by the optional automatic headlamp control. You can turn Twilight Sentinel on or off by pressing the Reset button. If you select On, you can press the Options button again to increase or decrease the length of time the lights remain on. Press 1 the Fuel button to increase time, and press 2 the Gauges button to decrease it. Your Corvette is equipped with a standard anti-theft alarm. The alarm activates automatically every time you leave the car and lock the doors using the RFA system in the passive mode, manually press the door lock button on the key fob, or press the power door lock button while the door is open as you're exiting the vehicle. Now you can choose how you'd like your Corvette to alert you that the alarm system is active. Press the reset button to scroll through the available options for this feature. If you choose Lock and Arm Off, your vehicle will not alert you that the alarm has been set. However, your alarm system is still active. Once you have the setting you prefer, press the Options button again to store the setting and move to the next category. The Alarm category in the Options menu allows you to choose how your theft deterrent system will react if someone does try to break in. You can program it to activate the horn or both the horn and the lights. If you're using your RFA transmitters in the passive entry mode, the passive unlock page in the options menu lets you choose whether your key fob unlocks just the driver's door or both doors as you approach. When you select the approach lights on function, the fog lamps, front turn signal, rear backup and courtesy lamps will come on as you approach the vehicle with your RFA transmitter. This function is designed to help you feel more secure when returning to the vehicle at night or in a dark parking garage. Auto Lock allows you to set your Corvette to automatically lock the doors when vehicle speed reaches 10 miles per hour on manual transmission cars or when you shift into drive with an automatic transmission. Auto Unlock will unlock the doors when the key is removed from the ignition. The Seat Easy Entry function makes it easy for you to enter and exit the vehicle by automatically moving the seat forward when the key is inserted into the ignition or back when the key is removed. If your Corvette is equipped with a telescoping steering column, this feature will also move the column. 
The language function allows you to choose whether you'd like your DIC display in English, French, German, or Spanish. At the end of the options menu, you'll see a blank page. When the blank page is displayed, you can access key fob training by pressing and holding the reset button for a few seconds. Here's why you may need to use this function. The RFA system uses a continually changing code for increased security. This makes it extremely difficult for potential car thieves to illegally pick up your security code from the airways to gain access to your vehicle. Normally, the receiver in your Corvette will keep track of this changing code. If the card does not respond to your transmitter, follow these steps to see what's wrong. Get closer to the vehicle and try pressing a button again. Your battery may be low. If the battery is low, refer to your owner's manual for the replacement procedure. If it's not the battery, your key fob may have lost its sync with the vehicle. This can happen when you replace the battery in either the fob or the vehicle. Here's how to resynchronize. While close to the vehicle, Press the lock and unlock buttons on your transmitter at the same time and hold them for seven seconds. When the fob is resynchronized, the horn will chirp. If that doesn't work, you may need to rematch your transmitter to your vehicle. This is easily done with the fob training page in the options menu. When the message fob training is displayed, push the reset button once more. You'll see this message appear. Now press and hold both the lock and unlock buttons on the transmitter for 15 seconds. When a transmitter is programmed, the DIC will read, FOB LEARNED. It will then prompt you to program the next transmitter. Your Corvette can have up to three transmitters matched to it. You will automatically exit the FOB training mode if you stop programming for more than two minutes, take the key out of the ignition, or if you have already programmed three transmitters. The last item we'll cover on the DIC is the English metric button. This will automatically adjust all the digital readouts and the speedometer to the measurement scale of your choice. You'll notice that the speedometer has only one set of numbers. The needle will indicate the appropriate speed based on your selection. As you can tell by now, the DIC is an integral part of the Corvette experience, just as much as the powertrain and the body structure. From alerting you to a tire pressure loss to customizing your alarm system, the DIC makes it easy for you to drive your Corvette every day. It's technology that makes sense. For most competitive driving situations, the classical 9 and 3 or 10 and 2 positions on the steering wheel are really the best. The responsiveness of the steering on the Corvette is so good that, that even the tightest turns through the slaloms on a Gymkhana or an autocross or on a racetrack can be negotiated without needing to take your hands from those positions. And on the open road that really works best too because you still have the availability to use the controls at the tips of your fingers with your hands in those positions. A good tip for the manual transmission is to remember that the shifter in neutral gate always centers itself in the 3-4 position. That way when you're completing a shift and don't want to take your eyes from the road, if you use a light touch on the shifter, you can feel it go into that center position. You'll always know where you are without having to take your eyes off the road. When braking at the end of a straightaway before entering the turn, unless you're really proficient at heel and toe downshifting, it's best to do your braking first and then do the downshift just before entering the turn to avoid changing the balance of the car. The brakes on the Corvette are really so good that you don't need the additional braking of the engine. After completing a shift, it's best to move your left foot over to the dead pedal. That way you can use your left leg to brace yourself during cornering maneuvers and really hold yourself tightly in the seat to give you the best control. Only move your foot back to the clutch when you need to do another shift. Keeping your new Corvette looking good and running well is one of the great joys of Corvette ownership. In this segment, we'll talk about steps you can take to help keep your Corvette looking 
and driving like it's fresh off the showroom floor. We'll start with proper maintenance under the hood. Corvette's engine compartment is laid out for easy access to important components. The battery, coolant surge tank and reservoir, engine oil dipstick, engine oil fill cap, air cleaner, power steering fluid reservoir, brake fluid reservoir, hydraulic clutch fluid reservoir if equipped, and windshield washer fluid are all within easy reach. Your Corvette's 5.7 liter LS1 V8 engine requires oil meeting a special GM oil standard. If you use oils that don't meet the standard, you can cause engine damage not covered by your warranty. General Motors recommends using SAE 5W30 weight motor oil. Under normal operating conditions, you'll only need to change your Corvette's oil every 10,000 miles. And that's just one of Corvette's long life maintenance items. Corvette's platinum tip spark plugs are designed to last five years or 100,000 miles, whichever comes first. The cooling system in your Corvette is filled with long life Dexcool engine coolant. This coolant is designed to remain in your vehicle for five years or 150,000 miles, whichever comes first. When you add coolant, use only a 50 50 mixture of clean water and Dexcool. If you use another type of coolant, you could cause premature engine, heater core, or radiator corrosion. In addition, the engine coolant will require changing sooner. Another important maintenance item for you to check regularly is tire pressure. When the vehicle is stopped, use a high quality pocket gauge to check the pressure once a month. When the vehicle is moving, you can check individual tire pressures using the driver information center. It is important to regularly check tire pressure because, as you can see from this example, you might not be able to tell if your tires are properly inflated simply by looking at them. Your Corvette is equipped with Goodyear Extended Mobility Tires, or EMTs. These tires are designed to perform at speeds up to 55 miles per hour for 200 miles in the event of total air loss. That's why your Corvette is not equipped with a spare tire, tire changing equipment, or even a storage area for a spare. EMTs perform so well without any air that you might not recognize if there's a problem. So a tire pressure monitor is used to alert you that a tire has lost pressure or is overinflated. In this example, the LR indicates that the left rear tire has low pressure. If a tire pressure message appears on the DIC, stop as soon as you can. Have the tire pressures checked and set to those shown on your tire loading information label located on the rear edge of the driver's door. If there are no service facilities in your area, or if you feel it's unsafe for you to stop, you can keep on driving with EMTs. The shorter the distance you drive and the slower the speed, the greater the chance that the EMT can be repaired because heat is less likely to build up and damage the tire. For winter weather driving in your Corvette, Goodyear developed the Eagle M Plus S EMT tires. Because the Corvette's original equipment tires were designed to provide the ultimate balance of overall vehicle and tire performance, it is important not to mix original tires and winter tires. Use winter tires on all four wheels to help maintain optimum handling capability. These are several of the most important routine maintenance procedures that will keep your Corvette in top operating condition. Be sure to consult your owner's manual for complete maintenance schedules. It's also recommended that you go to your Chevrolet dealer for all of your service needs. You'll get genuine GM parts and GM trained and supported service people. Your Corvette dealer knows your vehicle best. A big part of the fun of owning a Corvette is keeping it looking sharp. After all, what beats cruising around town in a sleek gleaming Corvette? The best way to preserve your Corvette showroom shine is to keep it clean, washing it often with lukewarm or cold water. It's best to wash it in a shady area, away from the bright rays of the sun. Use only mild detergent soap. Don't use abrasive or petroleum-based detergents that can damage your car's paint finish. If you plan on using an automatic car wash, be sure to speak with the manager first. Some conveyor systems may not have enough clearance for the Corvette's undercarriage or its wide rear tires. This can damage your car. 
The paint finish on your Corvette is base coat, clear coat. With this process, a layer of clear paint is applied over the color coat to help lock in the vibrant hues. Always use non-abrasive waxes and polishes that are made for this type of finish. And apply and remove waxes with a light touch. Machine compounding or aggressive polishing on a base coat, clear coat paint finish may dull the shine or leave swirl marks. Keep your Corvette's aluminum wheels clean using a soft cloth with mild soap and water. The surface of the wheels is similar to the painted surface of your vehicle. Avoid abrasive polishes or brushes because these may damage it. Clean your tires with a stiff brush and a tire cleaner. When applying a tire dressing, always take care to wipe off any overspray or splash that falls on painted surfaces or the wheels, as it may damage the finish. If your Corvette is equipped with the available transparent roof panel, be sure to clean it carefully to prevent scratching. First, flush it with water to remove dust and dirt and then dry. Then, clean the panel with GM glass cleaner, leaving it on for one minute. Wipe with a soft, lint-free cloth. To keep your convertible top clean, first vacuum it to remove excess dirt or dust. Then, wet the entire car before washing the top with a soft, natural fiber brush, mild soap, and lukewarm water. Avoid using stronger cleaners that may discolor the top or damage the interior lining. While Corvette's cloth convertible top fabric does not promote mildew growth, dirt and other substances left on it will. Be sure to remove any debris immediately. For more information on Corvette car care tips, refer to your owner's manual or visit your Chevrolet dealer to choose from a full line of GM car care products. There's a lot of pride and effort that goes into keeping your Corvette looking its best. Most of your fellow Corvette owners feel the same way. That's why many of you choose to store your cars during the winter weather, rather than expose them to the harsh elements. Chevrolet doesn't make a recommendation on whether you should store your vehicle or not. Obviously, that's your decision. But there are a few steps you should follow if you do opt for long-term storage. First, choose an insulated garage with concrete floors for storage. To help keep the battery from running down, disconnect the negative cable. Also, change your oil just prior to storing your Corvette. Oil tends to develop acids as you drive. Changing it removes them from the system. Applying a fresh coat of wax will help protect the finish during storage, and storing your vehicle with a full tank of gas will help minimize the chance of condensation forming in the fuel tanks. Finally, protect your Corvette with a car cover. When taking your Corvette out of storage, be sure to check the oil and fluid levels and replenish them if necessary. Check the vehicle for evidence of leaks and nesting creatures and inflate your tires to the recommended PSI. When reconnecting the battery, lightly wire brush any oxidation from the battery terminal and post before reattaching the negative cable. These are just a few of the most common storage tips. For more specific information on long-term storage for your area's environmental conditions, consult with your Chevrolet service technician. From routine maintenance to cleaning, keeping your Corvette in the best possible condition now will help ensure that you'll still be enjoying it for years. For a catalog of the Corvette apparel seen in this video, as well as other officially licensed Corvette merchandise, please call toll-free 1-888-773-3396.